Hello fellow campers and uh, solar enthusiasts, Captain Hook here today to give you my installation and review of the EpEver Tracer 3210A MPPT a solar charge controller and uh, I'm going to go over my installation and my thoughts and opinions on this uh, product. I've had this installed now for a couple of months and so far have been very pleased with how it operates and uh, its um, reliability so far. So here we see the 3210A. I've got it mounted here in my luggage or baggage compartment of my uh, uh, travel trailer and of course a lot of that has to do, placement has to do with where you can manage to mount something, how close you are to your power, your DC power distribution at the batteries and things like that. Um, so here, of course, a couple of things you want to be aware of is one, you want to have the controller as close as possible to the batteries. You want to be able to use, you want to keep the voltage drop between the controller and the batteries to a minimum. You want to use the appropriately sized cable. In my particular case, I opted for the, um, this is a 10-2 AWG uh, wire that's used in boats. And so it's a tinned wire that won't corrode as easily, has better conductivity than straight copper. And if you can afford it or have it, I would suggest using that for the interconnection between your controller and the batteries and however you're connecting to your solar panels. Uh, it's uh, much more flexible and uh, just a, it's just a superior cable in my opinion for doing these projects. So anyhow, uh, what you see here is again I've, I've got this mounted here on the bulkhead uh, of my um, travel trailer. There's the wiring that's coming out of the bottom and uh, that goes in a second. We'll move around and show you where it goes to. I also have the MT50 uh, monitoring panel uh, that you can certainly remote and in, actually you would want to get this with the MT50 panel in my opinion. It allows you to see so many more uh, parameters and characteristics uh, that is going on with the device electrically than you will out of that display that's inside the device. So up here we have the uh, MT50 and I'm not sure how much you can be able to see with all this sunlight. I have it mounted on the baggage door just because that was convenient for me and it is going to work. I don't know if you can really see that or not but in this particular display right now it's showing that the panels are at 34.4 uh, volts uh, generating about 6.8 amps and the conversion this is a DC to DC conversion and right now I have it using the internal parameters for flooded batteries I've got a charge voltage of 14.9 volts at 15.7 amps and um, that translates out to about 240 watts at the panel I'm going to talk about that about efficiency in a couple of minutes I go on around here now on this my camper this is a wilderness by Heartland and um, in this particular series of camper they put all the DC distribution here on the front you might be able to see them there that's where all the circuit breakers are at that feed the various uh, electrical devices in the camper I've gone ahead here on this battery rack I've got two six volt golf cart batteries in series so actually I have a very short run from the controller goes through a 40 I'm sorry a 30 amp circuit breaker and then feeds into the battery so there is a 30 amp circuit breaker protecting the output of the controller and the 3210 is a 30 amp device I'm not so sure that it would tolerate a continual 30 amps. I think sometimes these folks kind of overrate their products for marketing. Um, the most that this unit, I've used it for a while and kind of paid attention, uh, typically less than 20 amps, so I'm never pushing it to the max. So hopefully I should get uh, not as much heat buildup, especially in the summertime, the ambient air temperature when it's really warm here in Florida and so I'm hoping that it will provide a long life since I'm not pushing it 
uh, electrically to the limits. I'm typically running at about a maximum of about two-thirds of its rated capacity and I would recommend that for any device. I, I think a lot of time these manufacturers, as I said, I think they overrate the devices and I think if you push this at 30 amps on a continual regular basis, it probably would end up, you'd probably end up having some problems. Okay, now there's a lot to be said about solar panel installation. In my particular case, I have opted for what I consider a, a portable panel scenario. I don't have my panels mounted on the roof. And we'll scroll, kind of pan out there, and you'll see I have them out in my front yard for the purposes of this video. And uh, I have two panels. Let me get up here close. You can see what I have made. I took two panels, one I've had for a while in my previous camper, and then I purchased an additional panel. The the total power here is 320 watts rated by plate. And I will talk about that in a minute as well. But in this particular case, I've gone ahead and um, used the Anderson style of power connectors. I wholeheartedly recommend if you are making something that you're plugging in on a regular basis, these connectors are designed for uh, multiple cycles of insertion. I'm not sure because I'd have to go look at the Anderson specs on them, but that's what they're designed for. They are a high pressure, low resistance, silver plated connector and uh, well worth buying them. They're a little, they're not terribly expensive, but they're very durable, very reliable. And for something like this, this is really, in my opinion, the way to go. You certainly would not want to use the MC4 connectors that come with the panels. They are not designed for multiple or repeated insertion cycles. So what I've got here um, on this panel is the, my original panel is the uh, connector. I bolted it to the frame. Here's what it looks like from the back. And uh, I've got that mounted there. I've made a jumper cable. These panels are wired in series. And the other one, this panel here, is the newer panel. It's the 175 watt panel. And it uh, is set up to uh, be wired in series with this other panel. Now you could run this panel standalone. I would. I have a, made a jumper block, just plugs into the one connector. Because it's only me hooking these up, I know which connectors, the top one's always the power out back to the trailer. The bottom one is the power in from the second panel. If you were working with a family or couldn't remember, Anderson does make different colors. They are not interchangeable, so you could certainly uh, have, say, yellow or black or gray. I think they make about half a dozen different colors in the same style of connector, and then that way it would be really goof-proof. You wouldn't be able to make a mistake. Here you could. You could plug them in backwards, but since it's me, um, you know, if I make that mistake, that, that's my bad. But uh, anyhow, that's what we have here. And the reason for this is that back here in the east, when you go camping, especially dry camping in the National Park System, you can be pretty difficult to have sun on your site. A lot of the trees in the summertime, of course, they are leafed out. And if you just have these permanently mounted on the top of your camper, uh, you may run into a problem getting any significant amount of uh, power uh, when you're sitting under the shade. They just don't generate a lot in shade. Uh, here, by using two, I made up two 25-foot cables to really give me flexibility. I'm able to put these panels out because actually you can see my uh, camper here and I'm just the angle of the sun and everything is can be somewhat shaded. And But by doing this here, these portable panels, you're able to set them out away uh, into where you can get full sunlight and, and get maximum efficiency uh, from them uh, and that way you're not worrying about now if you're out in the west camping where there's not many trees etc probably not a big deal back here in the east i think you'll appreciate something that you can set out portable wise so this ep ever 3210a we'll get back over here for a minute as i mentioned has been so far a really good product uh, this mt50 provides a lot of functionality um, for various you can look at different things let me see here if we can push a couple of buttons here and change some screens 
Okay, I've scrolled down through. This here is what its rate, what it sees from the PV panels. Right now it sees about 35 volts, a little over 6 amps, so the total power is right at 220 watts. So that's a good screen to have. There's another screen here I've scrolled to and it shows the battery uh, voltage, the charge voltage. Right now it's at 14.9 because that's what the parameters are. And the charge current is at 14.8, so that's another good screen. Another, another screen that they've incorporated here is what they call the charge energy. It shows you what, how many kilowatts for the day the panels have generated for the month and the total. So for today, for what little bit of time I've been doing this, 0.3 kilowatts have been generated for the entire month of January. That's the month we're in right now, 6.79 kilowatts. And the overall cumulative total since I installed this system has been a little over 30 kilowatts. So some of it just provides a lot of just interesting information. Uh, there are parameter settings. You can drill down into the various um, submenus and set up your battery. Uh, how many amp hours is your battery? Are you using a sealed battery, a flooded battery? What do you want to be the reconnect voltage, the disconnect voltage, and things of that nature. So it's very much easier done from this MT50 than it is to do it from these two little buttons. I don't know if you can really see that or not on this little screen, especially since this thing is sitting inside the luggage department. It's not really easy oops, to get to. All right, a couple of other items I just want to briefly touch on is about uh, panel efficiency. So a minute ago I said uh, these panels are rated about uh, a total of 320 watts. Now here today, I was kind of pieing up here. We're here, we're in the winter here in Florida. Very clear day. Uh, we've had a, a, a high pressure front come through. We have no clouds, uh, no smog, no mist, no nothing. So we've got maximum sun radiation for a, a day in January like today. I have my panels set at an angle that I think pretty much is be the maximum angle for sun collection and things of that nature. And I've been doing this for a while and fooling around with these. You need to figure, in my opinion, if the panel says it's rated for, say, 100 watts, um, about 75% efficiency in this type of environment here. I mean, we're in the southern, we're in central Florida. Of course, it's January, so there's, the sun angle is a little different right now as opposed to the summer months. But I've always noticed you'll never get and the full rated power out of a panel. So if that panel says uh, that one there that's in the front, it's rated for 175 watts. I played with it after I got it. It will not, I'm, I couldn't get it to generate 175 watts. I had the batteries, I had everything turned on in a camper which would have far exceeded the um, supply of this panel. So this panel should have put out whatever the maximum was. And every time, Typically, you're right around the 75% mark. So, uh, this total of 320 watts will generate, eh, at this time of the year, 240, 250 watts. I think in the summer, uh, late summer, when I started working on this project, I think I was getting a little better, maybe 80%, um, somewhere in there. But you want to keep that in mind. So, you look at your overall power needs and consumption and realize that a 100 watt panel is not going to give you 100 watts typically uh, between the voltage drop and just the, all the things that go along with the interconnection of the equipment and what have you you really need to kind of keep that in mind and which something they don't really tell you about you don't read too much about you think oh, I'm 100 watts I'm gonna get 100 watts well you're not so anyhow, I hope this has provided you with some uh, additional information, uh, some ideas on your own solar system, and uh, there's a lot of information out there, and all you need to do is just kind of really see what's going to work for you. But do keep in mind, as I said, uh, I'm pretty convinced that the panels, you really need to figure eh, 75, 80%, so efficiency or less depending upon you know if it's a little bit cloudy the sun angles a little different 
Um, you know, so you really need to make sure, look at what your necessary power requirements are when you're totally off grid. And uh, if you're thinking about a solar controller, uh, again, this MPPT controller, uh, I've been very pleased with it. I know there's been mixed reviews, uh, but again, I'm not pushing this um, at uh, its maximum rating. I typically 15 to 20 amps tops. And um, by using these panels in series, you certainly maximize the efficiency of the controller. So there's about 34 volts at load coming back into the controller, the DC to DC, DC conversion uh, brings us down to about 14 volts charge voltage and of course that will drop off as the batteries become fully charged and they're not. And you will, I think, be very happy with this particular uh, product. Just make sure you good good, good wiring practices and good cable management practices. Make sure that you're sizing your cable and wiring accordingly. Make sure you got the proper overcurrent protection devices in the right places, and uh, you should have a very reliable, a very dependable system. And uh, we'll catch you down the road. Thanks for watching.